Hello everyone and welcome to a new game called Autumn's Journey. Well, it's not really a new game as in it just got released, but uh, it's gonna be our new game that I'm gonna be playing. This game is free, by the way, so if you want to... <coughs> excuse me? So if you want to play the game, you can play it. I'll put the download link below. And uh, also, if you really like the game, you can donate and uh, help the com game, com game company? Games company, the developers, help the developers to make other cool, awesome games. And this is gonna be a visual novel, so let's start. Chapter 1 The End of the Summer. Sunlight filtered through the airy birch forest as the lush ferns grazed my boots. I momentarily shielded my eyes before I turned north, north, treading carefully. The muggy atmosphere that had hung over the past few months was now being replaced by the subtle, subtle uh, crispiness of fall. Though the trees were still vibrantly green, apple picking season was fast approaching for the town of Berry. I cheerfully stretched one arm towards the sky, inhaling deeply. And thus, my weekly scouting of monsters, bandits, or anything out of the ordinary that may harm local citizens is over. Right. And that concludes my mission. I laughed, wondering why, why I was announcing my agenda to no one. <laughs> I guess I always just wanted to say that out loud. Walking around alone does prompt you into monologuing just so you can hear a voice. I just wish, wish I wasn't restricted to freelance work in Barry though. How long is my training going to last? I'm more than ready for knighthood. I can do this. I adjusted the belt holding my sword, sword, making sure the hilt could be pulled out at the moment's notice. Humming, I decided to meander back to the village by following the thin river down the gentle slope. I love the ter terrain here. Not super rocky, but not entirely flat either. There was always an inclination. And higher up, I could get a breathtaking pa panorama of berry and its endless orchards. Especially in autumn, when the leaves are so vibrantly red, the entire forest seems to ignite, and the smell of crisp frost and thick fallen foliage lin lingered welcomingly. It was then I spotted something entirely out of the ordinary near the river back, leaning against a birch tree. Thin birch trees were not exactly known to be comfortable resting spots, and I did not recogni recognize the stranger's attire. <sighs> Hello? Are you a traveler? His face came into the view and I realized he was sleeping, but that's not what caught me off guard. He had beautiful protrusions resembling shell shards jutting out of his long hair, right where, where someone's ears should be. Or was it a decoration covering his ears? P probably not. <laughs> I suddenly wanted to touch them, but I resisted. If he woke up in an untimely manner, it would be awkward to explain. At first, I was about to leave, but then I noticed something else rather odd. From a single glance, I saw no bags, no possessions, or anything else on him. This place was too far away from civilization for a simple afternoon stroll. Was he mugged? And if he had been in Berry previously, I would have known. It was a small of a town. Curiosity won me over. Um, hello? A flicker of concern passed over my face. I grabbed his shoulder and gave a gentle shake. Finding his lack of resp response unnerving. I quickly hovered a hand in front of his nose. Sure enough, he was breathing, and I did not see any injuries that would suggest he was knocked unconscious. After some evil, evil attempts to wake him, I decided to improvise a camp. I did not want to leave him unattended, and knew I couldn't drag his body very far. Tossing down my ba bag, I went to work. He looks beautiful, by the way. <laughs> the fire crackled merrily on a birch wood as I put open my cloth, which contained a lump of rye, rye bread and hard cheese. These were emergency rations, lest I was unable to return to Barry. 
Mother and father were probably worried. Just as, what, just as I was about to bite into the cheese, I saw a movement and glanced up, eyeing the staring stranger. Seeing my foot down, setting my foot down, I cautiously shuffled over. I had previously placed his body in a supine position and used my back as a substitute pillow. Though it was probably more lumpy than anything else, it was but better than nothing. Are you awake now? You've been out all afternoon. I was getting worried. I trailed off before I started rambling and watching cur curiously as he opened his eyes. Whoa. <laughs> In a split second, he shut up and then clum clumsily fell back. I cut his arm to steady him. <laughs> Whoa, take it easy. You just got up. He flinched from my skin contact and I hastily let go, retreating slightly. I didn't get any sense of hostility. Hostility, but he certainly seemed bewildered. Uh. Who are you? There was an uneasy edge in his voice, not quite a, one of a panic, but more of anger. It was then when I noticed that his eyes were of brilliant amethyst hue, contrasting his earthy hair tones. Better to remain calm. Orally, I found you in the woods outside of Ferry. The surprise did not leave his eyes. They darted quickly to his hands, which then covered his face. Lastly, he ran his finger through his brown hair. The horror of his face was so unsettling that I dumbly sat there for se several seconds before mustering the courage to address him again. Uh. Um, are you alright? Obviously not, but I wanted a better grasp of the situation. He attempted to sit back up again, but this time I was prepared. Again, he was repelled by my touch and I gave him the desire to help him that way. He still appeared unstable, but seized his sudden movement at least. He actually did it. The hell? <laughs> he clutched the, at, at his temples, his fingers grazing over the ad fixations of the, in the place of his ears. He wobbled as he tried to stand and I impatiently rushed to his side. Stop it, you obviously can't move in your condition, so you might as well sit down and clear your head. What is going on? Who are you and what are you doing here? He looked at me as if he was registering me for the first time since asking who I was. Everything about him screamed overwhelmed, and he simply grit his teeth in frustration. Oh. Ask if he's hungry. I decided to find my another angle to help, help him open up. I did not consider myself intimidating, but I, it was possible that he had no desire to answer anything. Are you hungry? I sounded my voice and returned to my spot by the fire. I grabbed the cloth and genu genuinely offered him a dry of bread and cheese. <laughs> he only arched an eyebrow in disgust. Hey, I'm giving you food. You should be thankful. I never give some food unless I'm full myself. So, take the food. What is that? Mm -hmm. That? It's food. You chew it. I ripped off the piece of dra dark bread and demonstrated, having delightfully to show that it was edible. He scoffed and aver averted my his eyes. I don't care. I don't want it. it looks revolting. Sweetie, please don't be assumed that I for a moment. Please. <sighs> Sorry, my pleasant food does not please my lord's taste. Ah, uh, his attitude was rubbing off on me. Calm down. If anything, he's hiding that he's scared. He did just wake up in a foreign place. Are you nobility? Thanks for answering. He fell silent and only the occasional crackle, crackle of the fire and the hooting of owls interrupted the sil stillness. They leaned back and ruminated over my meal, carefully to leave some food untouched in case he changed his mind. Ah, uh, there was that apple tart too. I'll save it for later. I wrapped up the clothes, only vaguely aware that the stranger was ex examining my every movement. It nettled me sli slightly, but I decided not to comment. I did not want to do anything that would cause him to raise his guard even more. It was now dark, and I oc occasionally fed the fire, getting the feeling I was going to be spending the night. After what seemed like an eternal eternity, he finally spoke up. Uh. Um, who are you again? Orally. Or I'm from the town of Berry. And you? Kerr. Kerr. <laughs> But it, what what should be better? I don't know. He re uh, reluctantly 
uttered the name, gazing into the fire. You seem much calmer now. And how did you get here? His lips curled, almost smirking knowingly. <laughs> you probably wouldn't believe it, be, believe it if I told you. <sighs> you have unusual eyes and a strange fashion accessory over your ears. I, can, I think I can find your story credible. He flexed his hands, scrutinizing his fingers carefully. <sighs> I didn't come here willingly. Out, out of all places, I don't see why he decided to drop me in this low-born, low simplistic... Continue? You're talking about my for like my known forest and maybe my known uh, town. Care? He glared at me as if I as if offended that I had addressed him direct directly. Excuse you, mister. So where are you from? I'm not particularly tied to any religion. If it's not obvious already, I'm not one of you. He tapped his knees petulantly. I'm one of the dragons, an earth dragon. He stated it full of pride with no ounce of humility. Obvious, dou dubiously, dubiously, I expected him from head to toe taking note of the stone, just like just for ear and his remarkable eyes. He balked under my stare but quickly regained his dignity. His eyebrows furrowed fiercely. So why would on earth you... Uh, so why would an earth dragon be here? It's not because I wanted to. He blurted out angrily, then ch touched his unique ears for comfort. I sighed, then tilted my head from side to side as I observed his explanation. Alright, I'll admit I'm not exactly accepting this as feasible, but I'm not dis dismissing it either. You can't tr transform back? If I could, do you think I would remain in this pathetic body? So weak. I instinctively patted my sword hilt to counter that remark, but stopped when I saw, it, saw his attempt, him attempt to stand again. Whoa. It was like watching a toddler, toddler take his steps or her fir, his or her first steps, but instead of cutely coaxing, I was frequently discouraging his effort. We already established that you are unfamiliar, unfamiliar with your form. Besides, it's too dark to walk around aimlessly. I'll find a walking stick for you when we can return to Barry if you'd like. It would feel wrong if I abandon you in this state. I don't need your help. Are you saying I can't handle myself? By the way, I think I've heard his voice. I think I've heard his voice acting actors that is for care. I think I've heard it. Damn it. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm pointing it out. <clears throat> Realizing that we both ex scaling our voices, I looked away in a huff, not wanting to have our encounter turn sour so rapidly. An altar. Hmm? I need to find an altar. You haven't kind of worship us, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the dragon kind of were here first, so it's only natural we pay our respect. I admit, I thought dragons were more divine and irreproachable. Kara was definitely giving me a different impression. I barely knew anything about the dragon kind though. They focused on their own affairs. You will take me there. It was plain statement, not a suggestion, nor a plea. Why an altar? They're all heaven kind made. How would it help you? He buried my question express expri exa exasperated. Paratally. God, I don't... <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't matter. Do you know where one is? Yeah. Yes, that's not... That There's one not far from here. There's a cave that leads to it. Relief flashed over his face, and for once his call vanished. Good. We should go there this instant. He obtainably tried to stand up again, but I longed towards and firmly set him back down. He gave it me in disbelief, but my will was as stubborn as his. Morning. We will do this in the morning. Get some sleep and I'll find an ideal walking stick. I don't think you'll master bipedalism without some assistance, especially not in a day. And it'll be difficult if, if I have to physically support you the whole way there. So just take it easy tonight. I'll even keep, an, keep watch while you sleep. After my entreatment, he fell silent and gave a reluctant nod, closing his eyes wearily. 
decided gratefully, feeling moderately triumphant over the ba that battle of big headedness. As Care was grumbling, I leaned over and pulled a small blanket out of my bag. The temperature was still pleasant even at night, but it could cool rapidly, especially since it was the end of summer. After, it, after returning some items to my bag, I reshaped it so it was passable pillow again and offered it to Care, who seemed puzzled by its, by its purpose. Believe me, you'll need something comfortable or you'll have trouble sleeping. Worse, you will up with a sore back and getting to the altar will be even more troublesome. <laughs> You already slept on it once, I think you can figure it out how to support your head with it again. I laughed sheepishly at my own stab at lightening the mood, but I could tell it wasn't working for care. Disgruntled, he lay down on his side and experimented with a few positions before resting his head in satisfaction. At first, he refused to use the blanket, but as the temperature dropped, he discreetly pulled it towards him while he thought I wouldn't notice. Probably to hide his expression, he rolled over so his back was to me and the campfire. I had a feeling the initial initial shock took a lot of out of him, a lot out of him, and I admittedly hadn't helped when he r ruffled my feathers more than once. Now that he was sleeping, though, any irritation I've still felt dispersed along with the summer heat. I would need to be mentally and physically prepared prepared for tomorrow. Stay cool and collected as autumn. I poked the fire and stayed on my watch. Still exhaustion begilded me into the resting my eyes for just a few minutes. I don't think it will be a few minutes. I think it will be a little more. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Hey. <laughs> oh god, this is horrible. <sighs> oh please, I've had less sleep than you and I'm already yawn, energized and ready to go. Boating a poke, poked care some more with the walking stick I had fashioned for him. I ha it hadn't been easy to find a sturdy stick in a birch forest, but I had located a long one that would suffice. I'd spent the morning cramming off any bark that had intended the top to make it easier to grip. Now it was my dragon prod. Yeah! Up! Arise, sacred dragon! Whoa! <laughs> Cut that out! <laughs> Kerr hastily shot up, throwing off my blanket in a feeble attempt to hide the fact that he had used it. I decided to counter his usual skull with the perkiest, most cheerful grin I could muster. Whoops, sorry about that. Good morning! My buoyancy was genuine. For some reason, it satisfied me to know that my vivacious irked him. I could use my sunny disposition to my advantage. It'd be better than snapping at him at any rate. Stop poking me with that. You're welcome. It's your walking stick here. You're welcome. It, it turned it sideways and afford, uh, offered him, it to him. He rarely grazed at it as if I was presenting a cobra instead, but carefully grasped it. Casually, he pressed the stick against the ground as he stood up. I remained close, lest he topple over like yesterday. His fingers drummed against the carved handle, and he looked at me quizzically. Uh. You spent time on this? Right! Well, I wanted to finish off with a pretty flowing, flowing ribbon, but I had the feeling you wouldn't like it. Grumbling, Hecker took a step forward, leaning on the stick before hesitantly taking another. With each step, he regained some confidence, and soon he was walking a straight line, albeit within an even gait. He could not exactly break into a run or even brisk stride, but it was a huge improvement from last night. I estimated he would, we would reach the cave leading to the altar by mid-afternoon. I quickly packed the fall and followed him, since he had a feeling the only thing on his mind was that altar. It's this way. <laughs> I pointed towards the gentle incline and Kerr narrowed his eyes resentfully. Going downhill would probably be difficult for him. As we headed towards our destination, I kept my distance at first, but I gradually drew towards Kerr, one hand extended at the passion of, of the stumble. Kerr balked and increased the distance between us, determined to progress on his own. Damn you, Tsundere! He's definitely a Tsundere! He... he's so cold, even though I'm helping him! <laughs> Damn you. However, his pace was re excruciatingly slow, and he was unwilling to start any small talk. As the slope gradually steepened, his footing became more unsteady, and I was worrying grabbed and I worryingly grabbed his arm for support. Whoa. What? 
He twirled around in surprise and I actually did end up bracing him. Once he was stable again, I sighed. Look, I know you don't like me touching you, but if your priority is to get to that altar as soon as possible, I think you can swallow your dignity and accept my help. Besides, no one else is around. Let's see. I don't need your help. You've done enough. I don't need any more help from you. He shifted his weight and started using the stick to ward me away. I frowned disapprovingly. Hey, if you try to hit me with that thing, I'll confiscate it. <laughs> Even I wouldn't do something like that. Rude is see he leaned heavily against one of the birch trees. When I get back, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Who? My master. His curt answer stalled the torrent of questions piling up in my head. It would be poor of me to interrogate him when he was still obviously overwhelmed by the situation. Right now, the goal was more important. Right. Then let's get you to that cave. You believe me? Everything else told you? Maybe you're just a very convincing actor, but I think even an actor would drop his grade even after a while. Just as I was about to reach for him again, a low grumble pierced the forest. I glanced at Kerr in amused bafflement. He averted his eyes, but I could tell he was embarrassed. <laughs> you know, if you're hungry. Sh shut up! I'm not. Shh. Sweetie, you're hungry. Another complaint from his stomach. You're definitely hungry, sweetie. I think you'll be able to walk faster if you have something to eat. What do dra dragons eat? Eh, okay. What do dragons eat anyway? Annoying. Meddling heaven kind. I rolled my eyes. Well, you have a heaven kind stomach now, and I hope it will agree with a diet like that. But it does make sense that you wouldn't want to try the bread or cheese. I doubt that dragons trash rye or run dairy farms. It was then that I remembered the apple tart. Even if Kerr found the pastry part detestable, the fruit would probably be familiar to him. I urged him to sit down. When he refused, I simply made myself comfortable on the ground first. Here, this is the closest thing I have to something found in nature. I would, I could for a forage, but that would take even longer. What is that? It's a pastry. My dad owns a bakery. Er, you probably wouldn't understand that. It's ba basically a treat with apple filling and I think some apricot jam. Thankfully, my dad re preferred showing off the natural ingredients. As a result, the top of the tart had thin slices of appetizing fruit covered with lustrous yellow glaze. Kerr sniffed a little warily. It must have been agreeable enough since he soon accepted the pastry. This looks adorable. The, these seats look so adorable. I'm sorry. Um, you're welcome. As soon as he started nibbling on it, he must have realized how famished he really was because he quickly devoured the entire tart. I watched as he coughed slightly and wiped the crumbs off his mouth, but his expression was unreadable. So, how was it? Anything tastes fine when you're starving. Or you just inhaled it so fast you didn't actually taste it. Well, it should tide you over until we reach the altar. Kerr grabbed the stick and we resumed, resumed our trip. The extra sugar boost seemed to lift both the pace and his mood, although he stayed tactic turn. As we continued through the forest, I stopped and groaned when I spotted some dark trees. Oh, no. Uh, those are you. Why fell ban trees? Completely forgot we should probably go around them. I fell ban. He peered at the thick gnarled trunks. <laughs> what? Scared of the bark? It'll be quicker if we continue in a straight line. No, it's not about the trees. It's what lies in them. They make perfect nests for aviterals. The hell? The hell are those? Those giant bird things. I thought you would know them. Uh. I, I would if I understood your names. Why are you giving new names to everything anyway? We dragons were here first. We already established. <laughs> I raised his ha my hand to silence him, not wanting to make any unnecessary noise. He scowled, but the shrill cry started startled both of us. <laughs> then what do you call that? Whoa. Usually food. <laughs> but you, it seems like you won't be able to eat it. Well, that'll be us now. Birch on one of the lower branches was a reptilian bird with scales running down its front. 
The rest of his body was covered in earth-toned feathers. Though probably not no taller than four feet, its extremely wide wingspan and sharp talons made its fearsome animal to encounter in the wild. Uh, the turtles raised young way into the fall, so the mothers would be extra territorial this time of year. The birds ruffled its plume, making itself seem larger than it was, in preparation to launch itself at us. I immediately stepped in front of Care, gripping as hard as I took defensive stance. With Care, Care's condition, an instant retreat wouldn't work. I'd have to guard him. Whoa. What are you? You're not planning to fight it, are you? Yeah. Do we look like we have choice? Look out! I shoved the Care off balance. Thanks to my quick re reflexes, we narrowly avoided this, a slash of the heavy terrible talons. The wind whipped at my hair as debris flew ar up around us. I scrambled to my feet and sprinted forward, hoping to keep Aritella's attention away from Kerr. As it dove towards me, I slashed upward. It weared away, dodging my counterattack. <sighs> Kerr, I'll keep it busy while you get away. Are you stupid? I'm not leaving you behind. Care? I need you to take me to that altar. Ugh. Maybe if you shouted the directions at me, I could take there alone. Yeah! I'm kinda busy here. I can't get my bearings in the middle of a battle. My aggravation was the insensitive I insensitive I needed to keep Aritel at the bay. However, my training had never covered aerial attacks and the bird's scaly front was like armor. Are you holding back? Well, it's just protecting its young. It's trying to kill you, but it's, it has babies. Maybe it could be cute and you think I haven't noticed? Oh, for the wings, clip them. It won't hurt it, but it'll stop it from flying. Just clip the tips. I won my stance as I prepared for another attack. At the last second, I leapt to the side, slicing at an angle. My sword beautifully sheared the avatar's thick primary feathers. The monster sewered to the ground, its shoulder and head bearing the burnt of the crash. I let out a cry, and I felt split second of guilt. That one should have yelped as the bird tried to tear me down with talons. Luckily, the avatarial was designed for stooping down a prey rather than running on the ground, so it could ho only hobble awkwardly. Awkwardly, as it screeched and futilely spread its wings, I retreated, grateful that it was even slower than care. I wove through the trees until it finally gave up chasing me. Then, sighing in relief, I looked back and returned to Care, who was also at the same distance. <sighs> Looks like it gave up, but what about its young? It'll be fine, the feathers will grow back, and it can still hop back to its nest. Its babies won't need to eat as constantly at this stage, anyway. Thanks. You sure knew, know a lot about them. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> he snorted I indignantly. I already, uh, I already told you their food. Of course I'd know about them. Soon the forest was quiet once again, with only the sounds of our footsteps and the top of Care's walking stick breaking silence. Surprisingly, he did not protest when I suggested him a safer road, route, not, nor when I walked nearly shoulder to shoulder with him. I had a feeling that starting a regular conversation would push my luck, so I kept my mouth shut and instead hoped for no more setbacks. This is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not very deep, Cave. You simply take a turn and the altar is right there. The hell? That's it? No complex mazes? No shiny sacred magic lake with the guardian or anything? Hey, we did what we could. In the, it's, this is a modest altar. I took a deep breath and smiled reminiscently. I haven't been here in years. I think I came before to make the occasional offering around harvest season. I gave Kerr a cheerful look, but he continued forward, ignoring my recollections. I shrugged and followed, quickly catching up to him. Kerr awkwardly knelt down before the altar, dis discarding the walking stick once he was comfortable. His eyes closed to the softness call, almost as if he was meditating. Suddenly, his mineral-like ears perked, and he stared directly at the statue. There was no change in the atmosphere, but I could tell Kerr was hungry. His hand tightly gripped his knee. I know we're connected. I demand you to remove this stupid curse. He fell silent and I looked around in bemusement. He was talking to someone? I could, but I could not hear the other half of the conversation. For some reason, that made me even more attentive as I tried to piece everything together. You can't be serious. So I said a few things, but... Huh? Yes, I met one. That's how I found the altar in the first place. 
He whirled towards me in blinking confusion, as if studying me for the first time. I stiffened, wondering why he was staring at me so intensely. When she finally turned away, I relaxed, although I could not help but feel anxious, ab anxious about the discussion. What about me? Annoying. Weak, pathetic, gives strange names to animals, doesn't seem to know much about Ishteria, Ishtera, or how the world looks. Uh, he's referring to the heaven kind in general, or just me? Uh. What? Er, I guess their food is half decent or something? What? No, 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 you're not sending me on a pointless inspirational quest. I'm not a child. I can't even walk in this form. So your plan is... At that moment, a blinding light flashed from where Care was standing and I flinched in shock. <laughs> Whoa, Care? By the time I had knelt down, Warren grabbed his shoulder, the flash had already disappeared. In one small moment, Care moved my hand and stood up without the walking stick. His eyes seemed focused beyond me and he slowly nodded to his... To himself. Um, did your powers return or something? He extended his palm and lurched towards the ground, slamming it against the hard stone. The entrance entire cave shook. The tremor visibly and mentally shook me as well, and my heart pounded loudly. I felt so paralyzed I, that I couldn't even scream. <laughs> Once I found my balance, I looked wildly at Care, who smugly flexed his unharmed fingers. I stared cautiously, curiously at his cocksure expression. So, he barely gl glanced in my direction. It's not exactly what I wanted, however, a portion of my original powers, powers and strength are back, along with my balance. I can actually be comfortable in this form now. He gave a dismissive kick to the walking stick, then promptly walked away from the altar. I mustered a small smile. Right. Well, that's promising at least. What will you do next? Do what he ordered me to do and become normal again. I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. No, sweetie, you can't. You definitely can't. Even though you got your powers back, you probably d still can't. So, ah, so you don't need to follow me. I had to anyway. There was only one way out of the cave. But as soon as we were in the open care, air, care to cop running with the grace and speed, and I'm sure no real heaven kind could ever repli ever. Rep I blinked once and sure enough I was alone. I scratched the back of my head still absorbing that. What just happened? You're welcome? Wearing my head in my hands I shook my out my hair in frustration. frustration. <sighs> was I expecting something from this? Well, I uh, thank you would have been nice. The tap knife was sword hilt for assurance. It's what a knight does. They help the weak and demonstrate the, their generosity when it's, it is needed. Well, Care's not weak anymore. He can definitely take care of some, take care of his, himself now. I guess my duty is done. Right. Mission complete. Just some experience as a reward and a discarded walking stick. I decided not to linger any longer. I started walk, walking back towards Barry. My parents would certainly be worried by now. Chapter 2, welcome back. This guy's gonna be it uh, for this one video. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Uh, so far, it's been really interesting. Uh, even though cares have been a little bit of Sundere. Even though I really like Sundere's. <laughs> um, if you don't know Sundere's Day, those the cold, uh, kind of rude ones. Then, but they would time warm up to people, yeah. Um, and if you guys would like, I mean, I'll definitely post the games again. And what do you think, guys, of it? <laughs> That's my only question for today. <laughs> and do you think they will meet again? I surely am excited to play this game. I, when I first found it, I was like, God damn, I want to play it, but I still was playing Gone Home, so. Ah, uh, <laughs> and so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.